This conference will now be recorded. Okay, fine. So um, I assume that most of you um, uh, from from this group are performance testers or performance engineer or are mostly at least uh, from the uh, testing domain, right? Um, so if you are a performance tester, um, you might be doing the non-functional requirements, scripting, execution, um, analysis, uh, reporting, right? All these things are something you might be doing it in your regular work. Some might be doing everything end to end. Some might be doing uh, just the execution or scripting, depending upon your experience, skill set, or the expectation from the uh, teams as well. Okay. So when uh, from 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 here as a performance tester, if you wanted to upscale yourself. Uh, 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 whatever we are, will try to upscale when we try to um, invest our uh, effort, invest our time, it has to be relevant uh, to the current need or the future, right? Otherwise, uh, investing something that is not even going to be used in the current market, there's, there's an absolutely waste of time, money, and your energy as well. So when you think of what to upskill um, it should relate to the uh, what is expected in the your job market or in the uh, project as well okay. so uh, I, I would broadly classify this into um, three things right? uh, one is um, the extension of your performance testing you can call it as a performance engineering or site reliability engineering it could be uh, the, the word of a performance engineering site reliability engineering it all depends upon place to place it varies it there's there's no single definition uh, I'll, I'll probably cover that okay so one one is an extension of performance testing okay second is something um, uh, away from your performance testing but um, uh, something uh, very very um, common in the uh, agile common in the uh, devops world today is the um, sdit or full stack qa right so full stack qa and uh, sdit are something like um, so one uh, okay uh, before going to the sdit right full stack qa is something um, uh, increasing your knowledge in other testing areas right uh, people talk about T, T shaped skill set, right? You will be strong in performance testing. Your core will be still performance testing only. But how can you expand yourself horizontally with other testing uh, aspects, be it as um, uh, automation testing or it could be um, security testing or some other flavor of testing? Okay. Um, say um, in, 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 um, most of the project not not all but most of the projects if you see uh, you will have small small teams small small pots right who take care of a specific module who take care of specific uh, um, uh, set of uh, functionalities so you will have two three developers you will have one or two uh, testers not more than that right so in that case the expectation would be um, uh, a, a single person to do the entire testing so you might have just two testers one uh, a functional tester and second probably a performance tester but not for every sprint you might not have more work in either way right so in some cases where you have more um, work in automation testing you would expect it to support the automation tester so you, your core will be still performance testing but you should have at least some good knowledge where you can support the uh, automation tester similarly uh, the YC was as well right um, the your automation tester should also know performance testing in terms of scripting or doing execution they might not be able to do um, uh, analysis or deep dive uh, uh, troubleshooting but they should be still able to go and uh, fix some of the JMeter uh, scripts or um, doing some execution okay? so full stack QA is more about you will still maintain your core but you expand your knowledge in the um, other areas um, so still it will be still within the testing domain the full stack QA is something really really 
uh, effective and and you will be definitely uh, uh, in 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 the project way they have a very lean team definitely this a full stack ua will be a real real beneficial yes data something uh, if you are passionate with uh, development if you are good in any of the programming uh, language right in that case you can probably um, uh, try to move towards is that where uh, still your core will be performance testing and uh, engineering but you will also work with developers in terms of uh, it could be um, uh, uh, analyzing the code or uh, fixing the code at, at uh, related to the performance or functional issues or doing small small enhancements it, it won't be a core development but definitely uh, more uh, at the uh, code level uh, you will be uh, fixing the problem or uh, doing small small uh, changes uh, so it, it is going to be more uh, development support work right uh, along with your your code will be still your performance testing or engineering uh, again that could be a different definition for is from from performance testing or engineering angle if you look into it if you want to be a yes uh, you will still maintain your core but if you are good in any of the programming language um, depending upon the nature of the project depending upon what is expected on the project we can define our own way of uh doing this as that so either way both for the both the scope is very very good uh, depending upon how technical you are you can go either to as that or um, full stack qa okay and then uh before going to the site reliability right other two areas are your cloud and devops so both cloud and devops is not a um separate stream like as that or um your full stack QA, but it is more about uh, the way the project is operated, right? If you see uh, today, most of the your applications are in cloud, either it, they are slowly moving to cloud or they are already in the cloud, right? Um, you will definitely see at least 70 to 80% of the project are moving to cloud, um, obviously for uh, the benefits that uh, your cloud offers, right? So which means, uh, invariably you will have to upskill yourself in the cloud area uh, you're not going to be a cloud um, architect or uh, um, cloud oriented infrastructure um, uh, uh, developer but when you are going to do a, a monitoring or analysis you should be aware of these cloud terminologies right at least a basic cloud terminologies and then to deploy uh, the application in the cloud to use the um, your cloud missions various cloud services so uh, if at all you wanted to uh, upskill yourself this is again a one more interesting area uh, there are certifications available with azure or with your gcp or with your aws you can start with, with some basic certifications uh, which will make you comfortable in these um, cloud specific uh, domain right um, uh, again, um, when you are going to deploy in a cloud project, you should be at least aware of what is available in the cloud for performance testing or engineering, right? Being a cloud watch in EC2, uh, sorry, in the AWS or Azure Monitor or Azure Insights, um, the, the log uh, analysis, all these things, uh, whatever that is available within these cloud, you should be aware of it, right? So um, doing a basic certification um, on any of these uh, AWS or Azure or GCP will definitely uh, help you to when you are going to deploy in a certain project you'll be able to communicate you'll be able to discuss collaborate with the team uh, very easily uh, otherwise it will be a all all black box uh, it uh, over the experience you will still gain but uh, definitely i think you will have an edge uh, in the job market or in the project if you are going to uh, comfortable with the cloud basics right um, Similarly for DevOps as well. DevOps, uh, or, or almost all your projects are now in DevOps, uh, in whatever way, right? Uh, uh, at least your development happens uh, continuously, your deployment happens continuously. There are going to be small, small pipelines. Whether the performance testing is done in pipeline or not, you are going to have uh, at least your uh, um, uh, deployments and smoke tests and functional automations are going to be happening in the pipeline. So. Another good place uh, where you can spend your effort, spend your um, um, 
time is on learning the uh, uh, tools like Jenkins, uh, integration of Jenkins with Loadrunner or um, uh, your uh, Gmeter, right? All these things, basic things about DevOps, DevOps tools, DevOps process methodologies. Again, you're not going to be DevOps engineer, right? That is not the expectation as well. You are going to expand your knowledge in this area so that you can deliver your work efficiently. You can talk to the team in the same language when somebody is asking you to do a POC or do integration with Jenkins with Loadrunner, you will it, it you will, you'll be able to comfortably go and take it and do it. Right? So these both are cloud and DevOps something a process oriented. Uh, it is going to be part of your projects. So getting into that basics, expanding your skills on these areas is definitely definitely going to give you confidence in taking up the uh, related work in your project. Okay, so first two things are uh, coming out of your comfort zone, uh, moving away from performance testing and engineering. Your core is going to be still testing and engineering, but you will expand your knowledge in other testing areas or development related activities. Uh, cloud and DevOps are going to be along with your performance testing, uh, more in terms of the way the projects are getting operated today. You will expand your knowledge. The other one is the extension of your testing. Right, extension of performance testing. You do scripting, you do execution, you do analysis, and then extension of is going to be your. Um, you call it as site reliability engineering or performance engineering. Uh, both could be same in some places. In some places, site SRE is a separate uh, role altogether, where it is more into uh, your uh, uh, production analysis, uh, chaos engineering, uh, making sure your your application is. Um, Reliable, right? Uh, so uh, there are uh, very specific uh, um, focus on SRE in in certain organization. In certain organization, they put together everything under SRE. Uh, even your uh, performance testing is under SRE. Your engineering is under SRE, right? So uh, um, so performance engineering is one where you do all this profiling, uh, dump analysis, uh, uh, your heap dump analysis, um, your um, DB analysis. AWR uh, report analysis, uh, doing a client side performance, doing your early server side profiling, all these things are going to be a performance engineering. And if you take SRE alone, um, as I mentioned, resiliency is going to be one. You have uh, synthetic monitoring, you have uh, real user monitoring. All these things are going to be also part of the SRE. So you definitely extension to your performance testing. If you want to expand your knowledge, uh, you can always look for performance engineering as one of the mainstream uh, uh, to upskill yourself. Along with that, you can also learn these uh, client side performance or end user experience, synthetic monitoring, um, real user monitoring, your app monitoring, resiliency or chaos. All these things are going to be part of your um, site reliability engineering. Okay, so um, three broader areas. One is going to be extension of your performance uh, testing, nothing but your performance engineering or site reliability engineering. Um, the other uh, things is going to be part of your process cloud and devops and then uh, another group is going to be extension of your no, sorry not extension is going to be um, uh, moving away from your core uh, uh, expanding your knowledge in your uh, other testing areas or development oriented oriented activity okay um, just take a pass here um, if any of you in the group have any uh, point of view or if you have any questions uh, if you have any other um, thoughts on the um, the trend that we are uh, observing feel free to probably put it in the chat or or probably you can also voice over Okay, okay, just give me one minute. I'll just take some water. Just give me one minute.
fine guys okay so uh, yeah there is no other uh, questions or point of view right i'll i'll try to probably elaborate few things on the uh, this like reliability engineering right so when we talk about um, um, okay there's a question uh, can you please tell us why we need to move to dev activity so it is not moving to uh, dev activity or cloud right um, it is more about upskilling yourself so that you you can be a differentiator uh see when somebody is going to say one is see there are two angles to look into one is a need right if you're going to work for a cloud based project obviously you should uh, you should be aware of you should be um, you should know what are all cloud services available in your um, be it is a aws or azure the cloud terminologies cloud tools cloud services you should aware of it so that you can um, um, do your performance testing and engineering properly right for that you have to upskill yourself definitely that is a more a need uh, of your uh, job itself second um, when you are going to say going for an interview and if you just going to talk about you know scripting execution alone right you are not um, and and you are not going to be um, definitely uh, from a market perspective job market perspective they are they will expect you to know the other aspect of um, uh, apart from your performance testing itself right either you should be uh, good in cloud related uh, um, terminologies cloud, uh, cloud related tools uh, process or something related to the devops right uh, um, because both these things are all going to be part of the product itself so uh, you should have experience or you should have at least knowledge on this aspect so from both both job job perspective and as well as the to do your regular work uh in your project these things are all required the yes that is something um it uh, is that or full stack qa um is not mandatory but um if at all you wanted to upskill yourself and if you think of expanding your knowledge in other testing domain i think full stack qa is definitely a choice right as said in 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 projects uh, where you have a lean team you have a small small pots Uh, then uh, people are expected uh, see if, if you are going to go a job and there is a requirement in a, a team where they expect uh, uh, only to have two or three people in the team right in that aspect if you know automation testing if you know selenium if you know security testing you will be definitely um, preferred when compared to the other people who know only performance testing so it's all about how we are going to differentiate yourself from the other people Are we going to have a varied skills and relevant skills um, that is going to uh, get you a new job or get you a, a challenging work in your project? It, so that's a that's a reason. Um, so is that our full stack QA is not mandatory, uh, but it is something good to have it. Looking considering the future trend that we will see in the uh, projects, you will are you are going to have a lean team. lot of things are going to get automated just getting automated it is it will get automated so which means the activity that you do in performance testing will uh, become less so it is always good for you to expand yourself you have to expand to performance engineering or full stack qa so that you will you can be still relevant in the job market okay fine there is one more question in the private chat um what is the uh, synthetic and real user monitoring and uh, what is our role in that okay see um both these things are from a production perspective um so synthetic monitoring our role is not going to be huge um it is more in terms of um creating these synthetic scripts right so when you say synthetic monitoring you will have um, your gmeter scripts or um, there are tools like dynatrace uh, or abdynamics uh, in which you can go and create a your um, um, synthetic scripts synthetic scripts is nothing but uh, the way you create a load runner or gmeter scripts right it is going to simulate the user behavior but here in synthetic monitoring it is going to run against uh, production production site and it is going to be a single user right every 15 minutes every 30 minutes 
they'll go and eat your login it will go and do a, a user journey and then get the response time and then if there is a response time deviation or if there is a um, errors if there is a, a slowness it will proactively send that uh, alert to your end users so you not to the end users to your uh, supporting right so before your end user is going to observe the slowness or um, observe a problem synthetic monitoring tool can alert your supporting so our role there is going to be it you should learn dynatrace or AppDynamics synthetic monitoring tool so that you can go and create the scripts you can configure the scripts uh, you can set the alerts okay um, that is our jo job when it comes to synthetic monitoring um, all the good uh, tools like uh, uh, your APM tool like uh, AppDynamics or Dynatrace as these component called synthetic monitoring uh, and even outside of these APM tool you have tools like rigor um, site 24 bar 7 there are a lot of other good famous tool as well uh, which is any, any synthetic monitoring tool is going to do a, a same thing you will be able to create a script you will be able to schedule it you will be able to set some uh, alerts and it is going to run uh, continuously 24 bar 7 at a uh, configured frequency level okay so that is the synthetic monitoring and our role in that real user monitoring um, we are not there is nothing called script here um, your IBM daily for Google Analytics it, it is going to be part of your application itself where you are going to access the application the Chrome um, you do certain journey the data from your laptop will be sent to your uh, server for analysis it will say a user from india logged in at 8 am uh, in in chrome um, or in from uh, iphone or from android device uh, from uh, mumbai or from chennai or from us or from uk so it is going to provide all the real user data how long they are uh, in the search page how long they are in the uh, shipment uh, shipping page um, uh, what is their network um, what device they are used uh, so all these data will come to a cloud so that um, at end the end of the day you will know uh, throughout the day um, how many users have logged in from where they are logged in from which uh, uh, device they have logged in all these things are all input to your non-functional requirement for your um, uh, scenario right uh, when you look into the uh, real user monitoring tool you'll be able to know what is your peak load when the peak load will happen what is the user distribution from which uh, geography the users are logging in what kind of um, um, uh, device they are using it so that you can simulate that in your settings you, um, you, setting it a user agent or in your runtime settings right all these distrib distribution will go into the your runtime settings or scenario settings depending upon the geography from the, where they log in you will can go and pick your load generators so real user monitoring our role is more in terms of analyzing your performance Analyzing is non-functional requirements from the real user monitoring tool. Okay, what is meant by performance engineering? Okay, performance engineering. Um, you have a lot of um, activity that is part of the performance engineering. There is no certain boundary. Uh, starting from your uh, code level uh, analysis, code level profiling, uh, using tools like JProfiler to optimize your memory, to optimize your response time. Uh, uh, thread dump analysis, heap dump analysis, uh, database analysis using AWR reports, um, your uh, JVM benchmarking, uh, JVM tuning, and and there are a lot of lot and lot of um, uh, things that you do to fine tune to optimize your performance of your application. Testing is just you run the scripts, you identify the problem. But engineering is more, more about proactively analyzing your application um, to identify the bottleneck, to fix the, to provide the recommendations to fix the problem, uh, and then during load test, introduction, monitoring your application. If there is a problem, analyzing it, uh, taking the three, uh, taking dumps, analyzing it. All these things are going to be part of your performance engineering. Okay, so um, always when you uh, the two things right when you uh, you can obviously ex try to expand your knowledge in uh, different different areas, be it as a, uh, a development or be it being a full stack QA cloud DevOps. But um, uh, the formula is strengthen your basics, 
your core is going to be always performance testing so you you can you can still keep learning the tools other tools uh, that are that are in the market that are um, uh, uh, becoming famous in the market okay uh, being it is from jmeter or new load or uh, gatling or k6 right there are a lot of load testing tool that comes but the basics is going to be still same you're still going to do a recording um, you want to do a correlation parameterization error handling all these things are going to be still same right so you no need to be really worry about the testing tool itself just a matter of a week or two you can probably go and learn a tool not a problem at all right so your your you should strengthen your basics from testing or engineering uh, you can learn expand your skill set in this testing and engineering area and parallelly slowly you can expand your knowledge in the new areas as well that is how you you can grow Uh, grow stronger right keep keep strengthening your basics testing and engineering and then along with that slowly and steadily you can expand your knowledge in the uh, other areas of uh, automation testing or security testing or cloud devops all these things are going to be a additional skill set that will differentiate from your other people when it comes to job market or when it comes to your uh, projects uh, but always Uh, you, you you can spend 70 to 80 percent of the time in strengthening your basics, probably 20 percent of the time in expanding your knowledge in the other areas. If you if you can follow that ratio, I think that would be, I would say, uh, it will it will over the time next uh, two years, three years, four years, you will have a, a very good uh, uh, strong basics. Along with that, you will also have a other varied skill set as well. Okay, and then for all these. Um, um uh, most of these um um uh, skill set right uh, the isha as the training uh, courses uh, say performance engineering uh, there are courses available uh, very specifically for performance engineering um, uh, um and and for um, uh, cloud as well we have it for devops we have it uh, and um, uh, selenium automation testing as well so if if you are looking for these specific uh, uh, knowledge or skill set or learning you can always reach out to isha definitely and performance engineering as well uh, we do uh, uh, starting a few courses very shortly uh, in this this week so if you have any questions around that as well you can uh, drop a note in the whatsapp group or or directly to the um, group owners as well okay i'll just take a pass here guys um if you have any questions any point of views um anything that you want to share you can feel free to share it okay fine if you don't have any question guys um i yeah, will we'll close it here uh thanks a lot for your time uh, being a sunday uh, taking your time out uh, thanks a lot and all the best if you have any questions on the upcoming um uh, sessions upcoming uh, um, learning programs upcoming trainings please reach out to the uh, uh, in the whatsapp group uh, we will be able to uh, provide you the information yeah thank you guys thanks a lot for your time yeah good evening sir hello yeah you have any question yeah i am working as a performance tester in uh, one company okay hello yeah, yeah i would like to update my skill i would uh, like to update my skill on uh, performance engineering i am ready to enroll in it also i also talk with uh, kumar sir sure sure can sure sure can i know sure. what yeah can i know what is uh, the between uh, difference between the performance engineering and cloud testing um see um cloud um is like um you have missions right you have missions you have servers yeah you can have yeah. you can have mission servers in your home you can have it in your yes. uh, office you can have it in a big server room and okay in the cloud as well in the cloud is nothing but somebody would have purchased thousands of vms and they are uh, hosting it in their building 
uh, just to put yes, it yeah. simply so cloud is an infra cloud provides infrastructure uh, we as a say organization we don't need to that, uh, exactly yeah, we, we, we don't need that requirement but we have to pay some uh, x amount Correct. for that uh, providing system yeah exactly you rent you, you pay rent right yeah yeah i'll pay rent for usage of my <coughs> servers or that one yeah Correct. we work on that uh, cloud services or what yes so cloud provides you infra and um, yeah. in the cloud they also provide tools monitoring tools uh, uh, when it comes to say azure you have azure monitor azure insights when it comes to aws you have cloud watch so when you want to learn cloud you have to learn these cloud monitoring tools cloud terminologies cloud basics so that you will be able to um, um, uh, do the work um, efficiently uh, you can uh, collaborate with your cloud engineers you can collaborate with your developers but when it comes to engineering right your application whether it is going to be developed and deployed in uh, uh, your data center or in cloud your application is application right application yeah. will have memory problem application will have a thread problem will have a response time problem it will have a problem with your database queries and you will have a problem with your client side performance you have to set a minimum meep maximum meep you have to say there's a problem you have to take eat them thread them so irrespective of irrespective of your um, whether it is going to be in cloud or uh, data center your performance engineering is more about your at application level majorly at the application level okay so yeah. application performance engineering is going to be common whether your application is there in the cloud or whether it is going to be there in the your data center uh, yeah. that is not going to change yeah it means my query is first i would like to know that uh, first is the first step is performance testing and next is performance engineering like that we have to upgrade the skill right correct 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 exactly yeah uh, so as second mentioned. step is yeah. for yes performance testing and then performance engineering performance correct. engineering later on uh, these are uh, cloud and dev uh, devops these all will be uh, yeah for the cloud and to... correct cloud and devops right um you yeah. can um uh, slowly start learning that uh, by taking some uh, certification courses right uh, aws certifications or azure certifications they will cover all the basic stuff that is required for any people who is going to use the cloud be it is a developer or be it is a tester or be it is a performance tester whoever is uh, uh, wanted to work for cloud project they can take the basic certification which will cover all the basic steps that is something you yeah. can look for never you get time plus when you work on that directly you will get lot of experience as well so uh, cloud is also important but performance engineering is going to be definitely something uh, you can focus on uh, uh, when you want to learn something next from your performance testing yeah okay thank you yeah does anything change in performance counters in cloud monitoring um see um, from a, is there are, there are good, there might be monitor monitoring uh, metrics that might be little bit changing the application specific metrics might not change your your uh, say tomcat specific metrics will not change your os specific metrics will not change um, say if you are going to uh, your application is going to be hosted in a kubernetes service all uh, right uh, then that might be specific cloud specific uh, um, uh, components might be coming into picture you might you will talk about uh, your uh, worker nodes or pods uh, so those kind of a monitoring you will do it but end of the day it uh, the metrics more or less it is going to be same you will still look into uh, application specific metrics like your heap um, your um, uh, thread utilizations uh, your os level metrics like your cpu or memory uh, your uh, disk space along with that that might be a little bit see uh, if you take example cloud watch right cloud watch is a cloud monitoring tool it will monitor the infrastructure only either you do it through cloud watch or you use it through your uh, 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 your top command or vm stats or you use a performon for windows everything is going to give us same metrics but there are going to be tools that are available in the cloud which will make your job easy which will provide you the data directly so um, yeah there might be few things that might be different when it comes to pods or kubernetes but basics are going to be same nothing is going to change a lot at all okay difference between performance testing and engineering see testing 
it is testing you find for you find out problems you simulate performance uh, you simulate uh, your um, uh, business flows user journeys uh, you create scripts you run the sc uh, scripts you find problems you say that there is a problem with response time there is a problem with the cpu or memory right when uh, when, uh, when you run a load test that's it but when it comes to engineering it is more about um, uh, finding out the root cause of the problem why it is high, uh, having high response time why it is having high memory what is the uh, root cause of the problem uh, proactively uh, analyzing the code uh, code code level problem before even you run the load test so um, finding out the problem is the um, performance testers ro uh, role uh, finding finding out the root cause uh, doing the deep web analysis is the uh, role of performance engineer at, at a very high level okay all right thank you sir Steve. i have a question as well can you hear me yeah i can hear you go ahead yeah this is Ade. so my question is um based on what you just explained now what's the what's the aim and objective of this course then sorry sorry go ahead i said what is the aim and objective of this course okay you're, you're referring to the performance engineering course right yeah this course that we are that we are doing the demo because the title says something like sorry let me go back again and look at the course title again let me see, go back sorry hey, uh, okay today's course is not a course it's just a more of a, a, a webinar where we want to talk about it uh, trends okay uh, okay the, the the questions that that is coming up is more into a performance engineering course which we will be starting uh, probably in the uh, uh, coming week um, that is where we are going to have a, a, a training uh, a session on performance engineering today topic is just a webinar on what is something expected in the market what is the trend that we are seeing what is that you can upskill just a um, uh, open forum for the discussion all right all right thank you so then i have another question which is also related to because i saw on the aisha um mm -hmm. whatsapp group i said i have another question which is on the cloud i think it's called cloud performance engineering or something like that mm -hmm. so the course okay. is so going to be yeah what you can do is see uh, you can uh, keep looking into the um, courses that is going to come up uh, in the coming weeks and you will have demo sessions okay you can probably attend those demo sessions so that you can know what is the topics that are going to get covered okay and uh, you can ask questions about what is expected in the course what is that something you'll learn that would be the right place to join and ask that question so you just look for uh, 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 my course is going to get started for the on the performance engineering on june 1st another two to three days you can probably start there i'll be providing the um, uh, agenda what topics we will be covering it how we are how, how, how it will be handled um, or how practically it will be uh, demonstrated so you can you can look for those introduction sessions uh, okay all right so okay thank you for that so is your course going to be on a cloud platform no, it is it is as i said right it is going to be purely on the performance engineering you have your application in the cloud or the non-cloud doesn't matter uh, performance engineering is going to be performance engineering only so that is not going to be specific on cloud it is going to be on performance engineering all right okay thank you yeah yeah okay fine guys once again uh, yeah thanks a lot for your time and uh, probably if uh, anybody is interested we'll also try to meet on the uh, the course which is going to get started next week yeah thanks guys thank you